Everyone's just going to assume someone died on the street. Honestly, yeah. honestly, if if we had a heartbeat more. Welcome back to the coverage of Weiss's Bochum 2018, where we're now looking at the semi-finals. Before we talk about that, I just want to take you guys back to 2015. Back in the days, the YCS Bochum was one of the largest tournaments we've ever had in Europe. And the top eight, they were stacked with players that were winning stuff before that tournament. We had Billy Bragg, we had Joshua Schmidt, and Marcelo Barberi was, was yep. in the top four as well. And I can't remember, I think Eugen Haidt was also in the top four? Yeah, some, something some, like that. Somebody like that. So, yeah. like, who matter? It didn't matter who was winning this tournament. There was a one hundred percent chance that everybody in the venue was like, "I know this guy. He, yeah. He's won yeah, this." Yeah, of course this he. W of course he would win. Ladies and gentle duelists, the names of the top four of Weiss's Bochum 2018: Argiris Evangelos, Marcus Burtjen, Typhoon Bayrakta, and Marco Perico. We have four players were making an impact at the largest European tournament of all time, and we've, we've not really heard from them before. It gets even crazier than that. Our semi-final right now is going to be Sefra versus World Chalice. The other semi-final is True Draco versus Pendulum Magician, so that, that turned out to be pretty normal. Yeah, pretty well a tale of two halves for these semi-finals. We have the decks that we were expecting to see on, on one, one half of the yep. bracket, and the decks that none of us predicted, N nobody, right here no. on the other side. No, no one you would be venue. ridiculed if you said, yeah, 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 Zephyr's going to win the, the whole players, thing. Yeah, Zephyr's the players win. that ended up in here, the players that ended up in here were surprised themselves, <laughs> some of them at least. Marco Perico earlier said to one of the judges, I, I have no idea why I'm still in this tournament. However, he's now in the semi-finals. Yeah, the one other, by the way, is Zephyr. Yes, <laughs> the, the one other is Sephora, right. So this is uh, one of the most diverse metagame breakdowns, quite the contrary to what we saw uh, a couple of months back when we had uh, four times the same deck in the top four. Yeah, the spirals. We've been talking about these decks. You guys have seen Sephora. You guys have seen, you have seen World Chalice, even though it's been a while. Yeah. Um, it had, I, I think Thomas was the only World Chalice player we had this weekend. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Thomas had a really good game too in his feature match. He won that convincingly. He got smashed in game one and game three. So we were like, at least we saw what World Chalice can do in one game, even though it wasn't the entire match. Yep. This is going to be different. We're going to bring you the semi-finals of YC Bochum, where World Chalice might be advancing to the finals. Let's take you there. So here on the left, Marco Perico from Italy. Typhoon Bayraktar from Germany. Sefra Young Singh. Second feature match in a row. He's getting used to this. I've got a feeling that Thomas is probably sat outside with a little <laughs> World Chalice flag, just like, yeah, go World Chalice! <laughs> you don't think he's mad about this, that, that he's not there? Nah. He, nah, Tom, Thomas... He was very self-critical. He said, yeah. I, made, I made a couple of mistakes just because I wasn't used to the feature match. Yeah, I think he's, he's probably rather noble about the whole thing. He's just happy about World Chalice. All right, Mystical Shine Ball. Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, World Legacy, World Chalice, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, and Kyoto Waterfront are the opening five for Marco Perico. He does not go first, however. Typhoon is going first with Sephra Divine Strike, Dragon Shrine, Stellar Knight, Sephra Xyton, Sephraxi, Treasure of the Yang Sing, and Chiao Tu, Darkness. And immediately we see a very strong play opened up by Typhoon, activating the Dragon Shrine, only to be immediately shut down by the Ash Blossom from... Marco's hand and pay passes over with just two cards being set to the field. Oh, this is great. The World Chalice player is playing something that Thomas didn't, uh, which Matt and I played in our builds when we were playing World Chalice oh so long ago, Transmodify. You can actually Transmodify a Shine Ball I would into... Be, I would be so scared right now if somebody just summons a, like a Mystical Shine Ball. You're just yeah. like confused to no avail. You're like, what is happening? Yeah, you can. Tr you, he didn't in this case, but you can transmodify Shine Ball up into Venus, which is really powerful. <laughs> or any, to be honest, Lee, you can transmodify Lee into into um, Venus, Venus, which is right. I think where he's probably going to go with this. He's going to normal summon Lee. Uh, okay, may maybe the yeah. Well, let's see. He's definitely going to use transmodify at some point. Not yet. Yeah. So there we see Lee now. He's uh, the counters are just ticking up on that Kyoto waterfront. Uh, looking at two right now. We had a situation earlier this weekend where 
both players would have been left with a Kaiju on the field and they both could have used those counters, five yeah. of them, in oh. that particular scenario. It turns out, by the way, that um, Kaijus do actually, well, specifically Garma Seal, does actually say you can negate any effect apart from Garma Seal. <laughs> so you can't have two Garma oh, okay. negate each other. <laughs> Never, never, ever come up before, <laughs> but that may have come up in that game. So uh, in playtesting, yeah. somebody, yeah, somebody yeah, in, in the Konami office. Yeah. Oh, this is no fun. If I have five counters on my gamma seal and you, you have your own gamma seal. Yeah. So we have to do something about that. Here's Aram. Right. So four counters now. I still haven't seen that transmodify look. Oh, w just wait. Just <laughs> you wait. It's gonna be pretty hype when it happens. <laughs> Coming soon to a duel near you. <laughs> Transmodify. Yeah, it's gonna. It's go Yeah, watch. Wait for it. This Lee is gonna turn into something. We actually did um, a TV spot this weekend. I feel like you guys should have been in it after in that little world. display. In a world full of world chalice monsters, I there also is one um, spell card. I also actually want to say sorry to Christopher Nielsen. He told me that in 2015 at uh, YCS Rimini, I told him that if he keeps winning, we're going to feature him. I didn't specify that it was at that event. So he went up to me this, this weekend and he said, you told me back then in 2015 that if I keep winning, you're going to get me a feature <laughs> match. I won a couple of rounds this weekend. I'm in the top 32 now. Um, <laughs> it was a really good strategy, I have to say. It was a really good strategy. Yeah. Uh, he still didn't get his feature match just because we always had another feature match that was completely crazy in terms of what, <laughs> what decks we saw. Yeah. yeah. Guard Dragon. And Revive. Second. So at this point, do you, uh, do you still owe a feature match to uh, Christopher? Yeah, I think that's... He just a needs to keep winning. That's a question. <laughs> exactly. That's Obviously, that is the perfect response. He just needs to keep winning. I, I do have to say I feel a bit bad about this. Yeah. I, at, in the next event, where he's not playing the most popular deck, I guarantee him a feature match as long as he is, let's say, like 3-1 or better. 4-1, 5-1, one, all of that is fine. If he's like still in competition for day two, got to get a feature match. If he just comes up to me and reminds me that he has to keep winning. Speaking yeah. of keeping... Didn't he transmodify? <laughs> he would have transmodified Lee right there, in yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah, nobody believes that. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, Marco Surely. Perico, ah. with his World Chalice deck, takes the first game. Wow, World Chalice is actually a real deck. Matt, please, if you are watching, back me up here. <laughs> he was going to transmodify at some point, right? <laughs> no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was uh. he was holding back just for you. I'm pretty certain that he can hear you on the headphones, and he's like, I can do this without Transmodify. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. Just, it was purely just, spite. Just so Luke is getting salty, yeah. Uh. He's, I mean, maybe it's also him, like, taking revenge of sorts. Um, yesterday, yeah. my pizza order was, was done in the same way. I only ordered uh, Pizza Hawaii, which is with pineapple, to uh, scare off all of our Italian churches so nobody would eat my pizza. That worked pretty well. Now the Italian is like, okay, I'm going to show you guys. Yeah. This, this is how we do it. We don't even need Transmodify to win duels. The Transmodify, just the pineapple on the pizza. At that Pre point. Pretty much, yeah. He must have thought that. <laughs> that must have been his, his theory there. D even the guys in chat are now berating me about this Transmodify. They're like, oh, yeah, it's useless. I would like to encourage them. They, uh. are, they are correct. Hey. In the assumption that you are wrong. Come on, Marco. Is that a, a rescue ferret at the front of the deck there for yep. Marco? Yes, he is playing rescue ferret. It's a card we haven't really seen much of. Ever. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we did talk about the side deck of the Yang Sing deck in uh, last round's feature match. Yeah. We didn't really talk about the side deck of the World Chalice deck. E even, even the rest of the deck, Marco is playing some really interesting things. He's playing uh, Ava from the new Wave of Light structure deck. A, uh, a card that is really hard to find in our app. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> and also uh, Herald of Orange Light. He's also playing that Rescue Ferret. Also kind of weird. One of my favorite things he's playing. He's playing Jinzo in the side deck. Oh my god! And uh, we were talking about Jinzo yesterday after we saw yeah. all of those super old cards. After we saw things yeah. like Regeki, Monster Reborn, stuff like that. I was like, we're going to see all the classics this weekend, including Jinzo. Yeah. Also Christia. So. Jinzo and Christia, great targets for Saryuya. Assuming, yeah, he's definitely playing Saryuya. He's playing two, in fact. Oh my. So he's playing two Saryuyas. I see the overextension on the wall already. Well, we know that uh, Saryuya can be a great card and a terrible card. He's got one for each. And yeah, we've been shown that this weekend. Um, he's in his side deck. He's playing Mind Control, Anti Spell Fragrance, Evenly Matched, Mask of Restriction. 
uh, I think this is Master of the Restrict. There's nothing following there. Raigaki, uh, Arcloud Christia, as you mentioned, Shinzo, and Abyss Dweller. Interesting, Abyss Dweller in the side deck, but no space in his extra deck because he needed those two copies of Sariu. <laughs> um, okay, second game. This time it's going to be Typhoon going first. Still with 34 minutes left on the round, that first game didn't take long at all. Yeah, blazed. Yeah, through that. give credit where credit is due <laughs> to Typhoon, who shuffled up very early. Deja vu. Typhoon starting again with the Dragon Shrine, but this time no Ash Blossom in Marco's hand, so we'll get to see some more of these plays coming up behind it. Yeah, actually no interaction whatsoever in Marco's hand with Twin Twisters, Agent of Creation, Venus, World Legacy, World Chalice, Lee and beckoned by the World Chalice. I love that I'm getting paid by word when I'm doing the translations. <laughs> <laughs> and you have these card names. <laughs> okay, uh, he can't, of course, activate that second copy of Dragon Shrine in his hand. There's a hard once per turn clause on the effect. Yeah, we've, we've seen that earlier, that he won his match in the top eight oh. with disruption and not with, with like super big monsters or anything. This time he doesn't really have any disruption. There's a this, this is huge. twin twister, really big, really big. Yeah, he I has. Think this might be the Ooh. shortest top four match we've seen in a long time. Yeah, he's he's got um he's got an orange light just in case he's going to get ashed at any point. He can just play a herald of orange light and be completely fine. Oh my god, this this is crazy. This is completely crazy. Look at <laughs> Welchel is exploding here. Is this a real deck? Yeah. Yes, it is. Look at him. Do you, do you know how like rapidly Thomas is waving this World Chalice flag outside right now? It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, it's okay. prob there's probably a typhoon outside from him waving yes, so much. Yes, yes. In fact, there is. And very soon there might be two typhoons outside. Yeah, I think maybe we'll see Saryuya here. Yep, here we go. So Saryuya plus the the multiple summons from, um, from the material used. So uh, Ash Blossom not even being used to try and negate the effect. Or was there no draw effect because two Shine Balls? Yeah, I think maybe two Shine Balls, actually. Yeah, so it was two. It was so that was just the special summon effect from the Saryuya. Yep. Maybe we're still re resolving uh, World Legacy World Chalice. It's hard to say. Yeah, I think actually, yeah, we are just we were just resolving World Legacy World Chalice. Okay, yes, of course, it's impossible to use two Shine Balls. The the materials all have to be different names. It's just a matter of how many total. Yeah. Wow. That is looking good indeed. I'm I'm in shock yet again. So that with that's uh, the first time this weekend that we've seen a Twin Twister hitting anything of of yeah. like importance, and two things in the semi-finals. So, but Marco, he's like very cool and collected here. Cool as a cucumber. The Ash Blossom comes down here, but as There's you said, the of Orange Light. And that is the win for Italy. Marco Perico with World Challenge in just 10 short minutes advances to the finals of YC Spokum 2018. Wow. I, don't, I have no idea what to say. That was like a short movie. Let's talk about it in our post-match analysis. Yeah, going into this, we said World Chalice is not a deck. We've only like glimpsed at what it can do earlier when Thomas Tuvillo, one of our resident judges, was playing with it. He did okay with it. He didn't do amazing with it. Yeah. Um, but Marco, this is really his tournament so far with his World Please. Chalice deck now in the finals of the largest European Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament of all time. Yeah. Who uh, could have thought that? Yeah, I'm in shock. But everything was falling into place. Um, yeah, abso I mean, absolutely. The, there's no denying it that he got some pretty amazing hands there and Taifun, the, the you know, absolute opposite. Yeah, he, he had he had his moments earlier. Yeah. In in the semi, uh, sorry, not in the semi finals, in top eight, for example. Yeah, but still. But um, he, he made the moves when he needed to make the moves and didn't make any mistakes. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's super interesting. You see two face down so far. Half of this weekend, this was really good because you have no more than one negation. Yeah. But then the twin twisters is just completely uh, turning things 
around and, and uh, opening the door for World Chalice to, to really come at full speed ahead. Yeah, in the in the top eight, we saw Typhon showing us what the uh, Zephyr deck is mm, able to do. Yeah. But here, the sad story of a double brick and no such fate for uh, Marco on the other side. Yeah. World Chalice really coming through twice in a row through little opposition, it has to be said, but yeah. the deck was showing exactly what it can do. Yeah, yeah. credit where credit is due, though. He, he had that orange light. This is yeah, this was a pure deck building decision right. that allowed him to win this game. Yeah, because that you know that hand trap would have stopped him from from continuing there. But yeah, the orange light really made it's it's one of those it's one of those cards that sometimes you really do not want to draw into it, like in a top no. decking situation where the next card is going to make all the difference. But if you have like like you have a bit of a field and you just need that one extra backup, yeah. and this is basically what happened here. It couldn't get better than that. You, you yeah. are happy to drop two cards if it means I win yeah. the game. He's a, yeah, yeah, exa exactly. It doesn't matter what the cost is if you're going to win the game. He's, a, he's essentially playing a better themed version of Gamma. That's yeah. exactly what that is. If he can play that in this deck, then why not? Right. It doesn't have any requirement. Like You don't have to have any monsters. No, monsters. That's a key, yeah, like that's that. a key difference there, right. I think. Yeah. And we, we saw really him like strong. he needs to get those combos off, and he did. And uh, in the end, there was enough for his 2-0 victory. So Marco Perico is the first finalist of the weekend. The second finalist is currently being found in the match between um, Argiris Evangelos from Greece, who's playing True Draco, and who's going up against Markus Burtchen from Germany. Yeah, we may even be able to bring them on. With Pendulum Magician. If we're quick enough. If we're quick enough. Um, having said that, um, we're going to look forward to that final. We're going to get ready for the final. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, see if we maybe can move them in. I'm not sure if the judges will let us because last round's uh, switch route did, uh, yeah. did nothing Let's for the advancement of the clock. I'll do, I'll do a Luke Flash moment and go and try and find out. All right, we're going to try that. And in the meantime, we might be able to get our interview with one of our competitors in the finals, Marco Perico. So guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back for you with more coverage from YCS Bochum 2018.